international corporations are modifying our weather all the time, and they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. So we have NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, admitting on the record that the atmosphere is now full of particulates and they don't know where they're coming from. So this is, this is quite astounding when you have the agency that's supposed to study this issue that's, that's literally um, unable to identify the source. When I spoke in front of the California Energy Commission in Sacramento, they acknowledged the state was losing 20 to 40 percent of its rainfall from, quote, particulates of unknown origin. But that investigation was never followed through. Uh, there's an investigation going right now with state water quality. I spoke to that representative. Their fishing game has acknowledged that there's aluminum running down the waterways. I spoke to the representative with uh, California State Water Quality who made it clear that they were not going to test the rainfall for this contamination, but isn't that where runoff comes from? So again, we have uh, an unwillingness to look at the obvious sources. This is a satellite image. It's a little foggy, but if you look closely in the, the bottom left quadrant, you can see aircraft trails blanket spraying the Pacific. This is visible on satellite imagery every single day. These silvery white skies we see are particulates blowing in from the coastal regions, and we have patents request, or, or the, stating the dire need to enhance the marine layer to try to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal energy. It's called solar radiation management. So when we have satellite imagery of this happening and planes flying in, in loops and grids, and we have this material blowing in on us, it's coming from somewhere, and CARB, this is important, we know this metal's falling on us. We have, I furnished you guys today with about 40 lab tests uh, from the state certified lab showing a very, very substantial amount of metal. And again, aluminum does not exist in the environment in free form. That's important to remember because a lot of